Challenge. My name is Alan Drake, and today I have an offer for you from the Lord. You know, at times we are all challenged by the cares of this life. You may have a desire to do God's work and to serve Him in ministry, but other needs may seem to be taking priority. You may have thought, how can I get involved in ministry to others when I have so many needs myself? Do you have physical limitations, health problems? Do you have financial pressures or money problems? Are there any problems in your family, problems in your relationships? Do you have a difficult situation at your job or do you need a job? Are you struggling in life? Are things missing from your life? Here's God's response. God invites you to cast all of these cares on Him because He cares for you. That's 1 Peter 5 verse 7. You know, it's natural to seek first to meet our own needs and the needs of our family members, but God invites us to make an exchange. He invites us to cast our concerns on Him, and He promises to care for us better than we could take care of ourselves. In exchange, He desires for us to take on His concerns, His priorities, and seek His kingdom first. This is the message that Jesus gave us in Matthew 6, verses 25-34. through 34. Here He says, I tell you, do not worry. Do not worry about your life and what you will eat or drink. And don't worry about your body and what you will wear. Isn't there more to life than eating? Aren't there more important things for the body than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't put away crops in storerooms. But your Father, who is in heaven, feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Can you add even one hour to your life by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the wildflowers grow? They don't work or make clothing. But here's what I tell you, not even Solomon in all his royal robes was dressed like one of these flowers. If that is how God dresses the wild grass, won't he dress you even better? Your faith is so small. After all, the grass is here only today. Tomorrow it's thrown into the fire. So don't worry. Don't say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? People who are ungodly run after all those things. Your Father, who is in heaven, knows that you need them. But put God's kingdom first. Do what He wants you to do. Then all those things will also be given to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In the first chapter of Haggai in the Bible, God exhorts us not to neglect the needs of His house. We may think that we must give priority to meeting our own needs and taking care of our own houses, our own families. But in truth, the harder we work at meeting our own needs and desires and those of our families, the further behind we often seem to get. If we honestly consider our situations, we are inadequate to fully provide for our own needs and, des and desires and those of our family. God never equipped us to do that anyway. It was never His plan for us to be self-sufficient. If we will take Him up on His offer to exchange our cares for His, He will take care of us and our families better than we ever could. Here's how God described the need for this exchange in the first chapter of Haggai. The Lord who rules over all says, The people of Judah are saying, The time hasn't come yet for the Lord's temple to be rebuilt. So, the message came to me from the Lord. He said, My temple is still destroyed. In spite of that, you are living in your houses that have beautiful wooden walls. The Lord who rules over all says, Think carefully about how you are living. You have planted many seeds, but the crops you have gathered are small. So you eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you are never full. You put on your clothes, but you're not warm. You earn your pay, but it will not buy everything you need. He continues, Think carefully about how you are living. Go up into the mountains, bring logs down, use them to rebuild my house. Then I will enjoy it, and you will honor me, says the Lord. 
You expected a lot, but you can see what a small amount it turned out to be, announces the Lord who rules over all. I blew away what you brought home. Why? Because my temple is still destroyed. In spite of that, each one of you is busy with your own house. So, because of what you've done, the heavens have held back the dew, and the earth has not produced its crops. I ordered the rain not to fall on the fields and the mountains. Then the ground did not produce any grain. There were not enough grapes to make fresh wine. The trees did not bear enough olives to make oil. People and cattle suffered. All your hard work failed. You know, it's the divine order for the servant to serve the master first. It's only after the master is satisfied that the servant will have his needs satisfied. Here's a quote from Jesus in Luke chapter 17, verses 7 through 8. Which of you, having a slave, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he is coming from the field, Come immediately and sit down to eat? But will he not say to him, Prepare something for me to eat, and properly clothe yourself and serve me, while I eat and drink, and afterward you may eat and drink? This was the divine order that Jesus observed. We are given more insight in John chapter 4, verses 31 through 34, which says, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat! But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, No one brought him anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. When Jesus was in the wilderness, Satan tempted him to give in and satisfy his own needs prematurely. But Jesus refused. A great victory for the kingdom of God was at stake. After Satan's temptations were overcome and the victory was won, Jesus not only ate, but he was served by angels. You can read about it for yourself in Matthew chapter 4. If you trust God with your personal needs and seek his kingdom first, he will honor that by providing what you need in return. God invites you to make this exchange. This does not mean that we neglect the needs of our families because the Bible warns that if anyone does not take care of his own relatives, especially his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. However, if you will give priority to seeking God's kingdom and focusing on his concerns, he will personally take care of you and your family in return. I'll share a story with you from my own experience to illustrate this. It was the morning of my final exam in statistics at the University of Texas at Arlington. Before I went on to class, I planned to stop by a poor widow's house and leave some money for her. I knew that she was experiencing difficult financial circumstances, so I put some money in an envelope and labeled it from Jesus. I drove over to her house, stuck it in her screen door, and then I drove on to the university which was about 30 minutes away. After I parked my car and began walking across campus to my class, I realized to my horror that I had forgotten my calculator. Now, in this particular statistics class, every problem involved adding up large columns of numbers and then performing various calculations on the sums of those large numbers. So without a calculator, I would be forced to add up all of these numbers by hand which would take much more time. I was hit with the realization that I would never be able to finish the final exam in the allotted time. After all the time and effort I had put into this class, it now seemed inevitable that I would fail the final exam and fail the class, probably. As I thought through my options, I knew there would not be enough time for me to drive back home to get my calculator. There were no stores open this early in the morning, so I couldn't buy a new calculator. I didn't know anyone who lived in the area who might be able to bring me a calculator. So there really seemed to be no options available to me. I walked onto the testing room, resigned to the realization that I would probably fail the exam. I was one of the last students to enter the testing room. The test takers were all sitting at large round tables 
and few empty seats were left by the time I got there. As I took a seat at a table, I was surprised to see one of the students had brought an extra calculator, and she was sitting right next to me. We were not friends, but she let me use her extra calculator. So I finished the test before she did, handed the calculator back to her, and then went on my way. I passed the final exam and ended up with an A in the class. Now let me ask you this. Why would anyone bring an extra calculator to take a test? I'm convinced that because I took steps to seek first the kingdom of God and provide for the needs of this widow, God made sure that my needs were provided for. We are told in James 1, 27 that here are the kinds of beliefs that God our Father accepts as pure and without, without fault. When widows and children who have no parents are in trouble, take care of them and keep yourselves from being polluted by the world. Because of my experience that day and other experiences since then, I've come to understand that as long as I seek God's kingdom first and live according to his principles as described in the Bible, my needs will always be met. That's the way it's been for me and that's the way it can be for you. God's principles work for anyone who applies them. My name is Alan Drake, and the website is spiritofwisdommedia.com. Thank you.